greatest challenges is uh, Pittsburgh is the city of 90 neighborhoods. Um, our region, Allegheny County, is a region of 130 separate and distinct municipalities. And um, every neighborhood wants to revitalize, and so does every community in the region. Uh, so some of our, our challenges is to um, look at and identify what those market areas are, where those market potentials are. Uh, in, in particular in the city of Pittsburgh, uh, traditionally we provided funding to community-based organizations to help build their capacity in their individual neighborhood or in their individual community. And we know that markets go across community lines. So a lot of our challenge and work is to get those neighborhood organizations to begin to work together on comprehensive strategies. And what we're, in community development, we've been thinking over many years about housing development, commercial revitalization, real estate. And um, now we're looking at targeting market areas, providing and encouraging that collaboration, engaging a community across neighborhood lines, looking at markets, and uh, looking at a much more comprehensive approach uh, to community development. And, and we're looking at, and we'll be glad to hear more uh, from, from Don Carter about um, the whole issue of, of right-sizing. Uh, some, some areas uh, may not necessarily be revitalized, and, and uh, what are the alternatives? So that's a major challenge for us. All right. uh, thanks, Helen. And, and I'm going to guess, Don, you do want to talk about right side? Oh, yeah. Or maybe you have something completely yeah. different in mind. Well, let's just stay on the topic. Uh, Fair enough. I, I think one of the challenges we face here is that uh, if you play the numbers game, it's really not about population. What it is about is about wealth creation and quality of life. That's what you want to do. I mean, the, the regional population of, of Pittsburgh, the, kind of the six counties that surround us, is 2.4 million, approximately. In 1940, the population was 2.4 million. Okay, so we have the same kind of population, but spread out into the suburbs. And, we, and, and as a result, we've emptied out some neighborhoods and some communities along the river. But what we really have here is, is all the infrastructure, culturally, socially, topographically, environmentally, to sustain a city that size. I mean, the country of Ireland and the country of Scotland are maybe only a million and a half more people than in our region. So we have to think about the region as being big enough. And a professor at Case Western in, in um, Cleveland wrote a paper called Growth Without Growth. Gottlieb was his name, if you want to look it up. And what he talks about is just exactly what I've said. If, if the quality of life and, and, and the amount of per capita income is going up in your community, you're winning. Whereas if you're Tucson, Arizona, and all your population growth was around call centers and service jobs and housing, and that collapses, you really are going to have to help Tucson as well. But we have, in fact, there was just a newspaper report yesterday that Pittsburgh, in terms of per capita income growth in the last 10 years, is like in the top five cities in the United States. So we're grad, we're, maybe we're the turf, you know, we're just taking our time, we're getting where we need to go. But there's so much here. We were just talking earlier, I mean, one of the things that, that people want to do is brand the city, and there will probably be more people wanting to brand the city. <clears throat> but I always think of this, it's all here. That's my branding for Pittsburgh, my city, it's all here. We already have the things we're doing. What we want to do, like River Life is doing, we want to improve the quality of life and the amenities, and allow the natural growth of wealth around there. Excellent. All right, so uh, Don, uh, you, you, you can't talk about the pirates. There's got to be some <coughs> other some yeah. other challenge facing the city. <laughs> no, that, that is <laughs> the biggest the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> well, the biggest challenge facing our organization, I suspect most nonprofits, is that uh, the world changes awfully quickly these days. So we had a very stable business model that was a very comfortable way of operating for us for many years. Uh, and the world wouldn't change on us. And so uh, we've had to become smarter, faster, and better at our business savvy so that we can achieve our social mission uh, with limited resources, with CapEx and state funding, and, and with a, a changing market condition. Uh, so bringing that business savvy, something that high school can help with its programs, uh, is, is one of our big challenges. The second one is our job is to anticipate demand and to build the facilities that are speculative, to take the risks, put the uh, facilities out there that will capture the coming growth, 
not to do what private developers do, which is someone shows up with money and build them a building. And so uh, it's very difficult to anticipate which way the economy is going. So again, we need well-trained high school students to help us do things like that. And then finally, uh, we really need to craft new partnerships. So we used to do a lot of things on our own uh, in, the, in the city, in the county, out in the other outlying counties. Today we have to do them in partnership with other organizations and we really need to do a lot of hard thinking about creating genuine win-win scenarios where those partnerships are not only good for us and good for the other uh, partner organizations, but also really accomplish the region's mission. Yeah, thanks so much. All right, and, and Jim, your uh, last up. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, I think we all agree funding is probably one of our, uh, our biggest challenges. And I was uh, chuckling in the earlier comment about we make jobs when we hire someone, but you have to probably look at our missions and how we get our money, we always claim we're making jobs. And I think that's the crux of, of one of the challenges. You know, years ago when uh, Stephen Covey published his book, uh, in there he took the analogy of the golden goose. And he said, you know, the egg is the production, but the goose is the ability or the capability to produce. And I think of economic development as the capability to produce. And the second challenge I think we have in that context is um, we are uh, a component of the final result, the end result, the jobs. And one of the biggest challenges that we have is the process of what we do is not linked. The measurement of our processes are not linked. And if you think simply of a manufacturing facility, every manufacturing step is measured to get to the final quality result. And so one of the challenges we have in getting our money is a lack of measurement of the process. And I think our state's working on that, but I think that's one of our challenges. Excellent. Well, again, thank you also very much, and, and thank you, uh, especially Krishnan, for uh, uh, the vision to convene this group. And finally, um, we, we do appreciate if you can stay for a few more minutes to get a chance to meet some of our students. I think there's going to be a reception outside, and, and how about a, a round of applause for everyone involved.